Hi, and welcome to Via Libre Design Part Modeling Introduction. The goal in this video is to introduce you to the basics of Libre Design, as well as an overview of some of the core features and workflows of part modeling. We'll start off with some examples of the types of parts you can create. Libre Design allows you to make very complex parts, suited to almost any industry. Intricate mechanical products, tooling and fixtures, and mold design are just some examples of where Libre Design is a great fit. In fact, Libre Design is engineered to create mechanical designs of any complexity, whether they have 10 or 200 features. As the most cost-effective mechanical design solution on the market, you'll get everything for a fifth of the cost of our competition. First, some basics. You can change the style of the display from your model between some common formats, such as shader display or wireframe. Easily switching between these allows you to always use the mode that's best for any given situation. At times, you'll need to view cross-sections of your model. A Libre Design easily creates section views of parts or entire assemblies. It even lets you use the section view geometry as the basis for new sketches. This is useful for ensuring your parts fit together properly. It's always a good practice to keep detailed information about the parts and assemblies that you make. This is especially easy in a Libre Design, since you can input a wide variety of information about your model directly in the part file. This information can be automatically applied to the drawings you make, so you only have to update the information in one place. You can also tell a Libre Design what material your part is made of. In this example, we're using steel. While the density of the material is shown automatically, you can also create custom materials to suit your needs. The great thing about knowing what material your part is made of is that a Libre Design can tell you detailed, real-world information about your part, such as the mass, surface area, volume, center of mass, and other properties. We can see that our part weighs 1.85 kilograms. This is useful for parts, but typically your design has more than one part. Being able to query this information about an entire assembly lets you make informed design decisions before manufacturing to ensure that your design fits within your specifications. Here we can see that the entire chassis assembly weighs about 40 kilograms. Once your part is designed, making complex changes is as easy as double-clicking on what you'd like to change. Here we're modifying the size of a fillet from 5 millimeters to 2.5 millimeters. Making substantial design changes is also easy. Here we're changing the size of the entire part. We realize the part's width needs to be bigger, so we'll just double-click the dimension and modify it. Once we're done, we'll regenerate the model and we'll change cascades throughout the entire design. Notice the holes on the left corner have shifted automatically since we defined them to be a certain distance from the edge. Here we'll show another example of modifying a part we'd like to change the hole type. And these holes aren't just cuts, they're intelligent features that contain information that can be automatically displayed in a drawing. We're changing the thread type here. If we made a drawing of this part already, this change would appear automatically in it. We'd also like to change the amount of holes and their placement. Changing things like this is fast and efficient in a Libre design, and it's literally as easy as editing some values. Now that you've got a basic understanding of how things work, let's go ahead and make our first part. We'll open up a new part workspace from the Libre Design home window. All parts start off as a sketch. We're going to start off our part with a basic rectangle. Once we draw it, you'll notice that our rectangle is completely free to move. We're going to add sketch constraints, in this case, the symmetric constraint, to ensure that everything is centered. Constraints are real-world relationships that allow you to ensure that certain design criteria are maintained, regardless of changes you make. Now we're going to size the rectangle by quickly adding some dimensions. You can see the sketch changes shape to reflect its new size. In the middle, we'd like to create a slot, and we could draw this by hand, but it's much easier and quicker to use one of the shape tools found in a Libre Design, which automates common shapes found in mechanical design as well as common patterns. We'll insert a few values, and we're done. Now it's time to turn this sketch into a solid. We'll use the Extrude Boss tool, which creates material from a sketch in a linear fashion. Now this part's supposed to be hollow, and we'll quickly hollow it out using a shell command, leaving each wall with a thickness of 0.2 inches. 
in the same way we created material earlier, we can use sketches to remove material as well. Here we're using a circular sketch to create a relief that goes through the entire part. After a quick sketch at a dimension, we'll use an extrude cut feature to finish off the relief. You can use parts of your existing model as the basis for new sketches and features. Here we're going to project the side face to give us some references for another sketch. You can see a rectangle shows up, allowing us to use its position to exactly place the height of the new rectangle. This is a very common feature used in solid modeling, since it eliminates tedious dimensioning, but maintains accuracy throughout the design, even if your model changes later. Here we're creating a sketch that will be used to make a tab which allows us to mount the part in the assembly later on. Sketches can contain as many types of figures as needed and can be as complex as you require. Here we'll use the trim tool to remove some unneeded sketch figures and then add a dimension to our outer circle. You can place figures inside of other figures and in our case we're going to have two concentric circles. We'll add a quick dimension and when we extrude the sketch, we're left with a hole in the middle. You can either enter in values or drag the bar to easily position and define your feature. A Libre Design allows you to take advantage of symmetric parts, and instead of doing all those steps again on the other side, we'll just mirror our last feature. Finally, we like to smooth out some of the edges. So we'll use the fillet tool and begin selecting edges that require smoothing. You can select edges or entire faces as the basis for fillets and chamfers, which are both created in the same way, and then just size the fillet and we're done. While our part's now complete, it didn't take too long, and we have a perfectly accurate representation of what this would look like and act like in the real world. We can measure it, automatically create drawings of it, assemble it, send it to Al Gore Design Check for an FEA analysis, or a LibreCam to generate toolpaths for a CNC machine. We all know that unfortunately in the real world, there are also design changes. Making big design changes in some software, especially 2D packages, is simply tedious and error prone. With the Libre Design, it's easy and fast. Changing the most basic part dimensions is as easy as editing the intelligent dimensions that we used to create it to begin with. Editing any component is as literally as easy as double clicking it. Even though we changed our dimensions, our shell, our fillets, and tabs are accurately placed, and our drawing would update automatically to reflect the changes. It's just that easy. Now we'll quickly get into slightly more complex parts. Here we're creating a square shaped tube that has multiple bends. This is a breeze of the Libre Design, and we'll create a 3D sketch that has all of those bends defined. 3D sketches are useful for creating tubing, wiring, and other similar things. With just a couple of mouse clicks, our profile is quickly created and ready for some 2D fillets. You can add dimensions, fillets, and sketch constraints to 3D sketches, just like in 2D sketches, to make sure that your shape is accurate. Now we'll create a sweep using our square profile and the path that we just made. And with a couple of clicks, our tube is created precisely to our design specifications. Again, we're going to leverage symmetry to avoid having to do double the work. Another advantage of the mirror operation is that if we change the mirror's source, in this case the tube, the other side changes automatically to match it. And in just a few seconds, we've finished our solid model. The last thing that we'll touch on is making even more complex curvy shapes. Libre Design's powerful loft command allows you to create a solid that goes through several sketches conforming to their shape along the way. Lofts allow you to make parts that can be difficult or impossible using other techniques. We'll start off by selecting the loft command and then selecting the faces and sketches that we'd like to use. Libre Design easily creates the complex, fully editable solid.